And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Undying Gambler, our first of four meme tier Monday viewer submitted donation decks. They all kind of have like a, a cool little combo that they are built around. Um, this one is kind of built around the Undying with Gluttony. So of course Gluttony is, you know, kill an ally, it's a newish card, kill an ally with last breath to summon a follower from your deck that costs one more. So your follower has to have last breath in order for gluttony uh, to work. And then you get an additional follower. So what our plan is, is to kill the undying with the gluttony and then put Brash Gambler into play. Because Brash Gambler has like this play ability that says to play me, you have to discard two cards. Well, if you get if you get it in just into play for free with the undying, you don't have to do that whole discard two cards. And then we'll have a four or five Brash Gambler in play where we can attack and get two fleeting cards which is you know, obviously pretty awesome. So we have that combo. Or if if we don't hit Brash Gambler, we can also hit Zap Sprayfin, another great card to summon um, from your deck because it, it again has a summon ability. And so we can um, you know attune, attune for one right away and then also draw a spell that costs three or less from your deck, which could just be another Gluttony. We could just get, you know, we could have basically have the Gluttony of the Undying to put Sprayfin into play. And the next draw another gluttony the next turn the undying comes back right and so then we just gluttony the undying again <laughs> and then you know maybe get another spray fin get a gluttony again you know right like we can just kind of go infinite there so that that's pretty cool um so yeah so we have we have that those together um but then besides that we got lots of good shadow wild stuff uh we don't really want to gluttony our other things right like gluttony a warden's prey to put in like a curse keeper or a fortune croaker isn't really that great gluttony the if we gluttony the curse keeper, maybe we get the undying, but we could also hit the caretaker. That isn't great. So we really want to save the gluttony for the undying, right? Like that's that's the combo we really want. Um, the sh the stalking shadows helps find the gluttony. Same with glimpse beyond. Same with fortune croaker without drawing cards. Um, and then you know ravenous butcher of course is great with the undying. Great with curse keeper. Regular old shadow owl stuff. A couple ruinations. So like if if our opponent has to extend wide. Boom, Ruination, our, our Undyings come back. It's a very good card there. And then also a couple of Ledros Atrocity to finish out games. Um, Twisted Fate just, you know, does everything. And also if we're drawing extra fleeting cards off the Brash Gambler, that, that could level up the Twisted Fate pretty quickly. So let's try it out. Undying Gambler, looks pretty cool. We're just playing in normal today. It is just meme tier day. Where, um, you know, like these decks aren't really designed necessarily for ranked but they're just you know designed to do some cool little combos and, and things like that. Play some cards that we don't always normally play in ranked. Um, also, if we do end up going 4-0 in normal, we will go ahead and take it over for ranked for to try to finish out the 5-0 with our five games. Okay, so this, this hand is really just missing the Undying. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan the Sprayfin and the Glimpse Beyond and keep the other two... Okay, we got Curse Keeper, Ravenous Butcher, and there's the Undying to go with the Gluttony. Very good. Nothing at the stink of blood and sweat. Hard to get rich. Ow. This is a scary deck that our opponent's playing. For murder. Still to go All right, and I'm I'm gonna pass here. I don't think it's like there's no real upside of playing the Ravenous Butcher right then because I can just play it the next turn. Because we could like it's possible that we would just draw, draw uh, <clears throat> Blighted Caretaker here, and you know Blighted Caretaker, especially on this board, would have been incredible. Now we know that's not going to be the case. Powder Monkey Jagged Butcher. Opponent's doing some cool stuff. So no 
sure if I gluttony right now or wait. I kind of want to wait. Let's see. Because if I, because it takes my entire turn to gluttony, but I could play like Sprayfin this turn and then also have like Twisted Fate plus gluttony the next turn. Gotta go with the flow. Ooh. Shake me down the strong don't to the Paradise City. Man, another Jagged Butcher? That's pretty good. <clears throat> Alright, hope this works. Cool. We got Gambler. Yeah, Gambler. Can we get some fleeting cards? Of course, the problem with that is the um, is this Powder Monkey that gets the block. So they're gonna have Gangplank next turn, or right, if I attack with Gambler, like they they just block with that thing. I guess I guess I just go Red Card. I'm always up for Kill this round. Monkey Idol. It does mean that like the two fleeting cards aren't gonna matter. Like if I attack. Get two fleeting cards that don't matter. Something for all. Yeah, both Gangplank and Sejuani are, are two awesome champions that are probably going to be killing me. Let's just keep this 4 5 back. Four. Pain is nothing. Lots of things we can do here. We can sacrifice our Twisted Fate. We can shake down it. We can sacrifice it here. I mean, it can save me a little bit of life, though, by blocking. Instincts. Mm. I don't know. Because I, I think I'm going to do this. Because I kind of want to just draw two cards. Now, I want to have the four mana, right? Like, we have a lot of things at the four mana. One did. So, I didn't really want to use the one mana for shakedown yet. Why are you here? Seeker Conservator. That's pretty nice. So, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. I don't judge fate, but I can see it. Okay, so I'm planning on going Curse Keeper at the beginning of the turn. Or sorry, <laughs> curse keeper. Sorry, Vladi caretaker. Caretaker at the beginning of the turn. Um, killing this fortune croaker. Four, eight, eleven. That's only eleven. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, never mind. It's thirteen damage. Okay, so assuming if they just have like one blocker, this can be thirteen damage. If they. They can frostbite everything though with like, you know, like if they have like a couple warning shots and get to just frostbite everything, you know, level up Sejuani, right? Like our, we're dead, right? Like we can't beat a leveled up Sejuani. So like we kind of have to go this turn. Right. All right, so keep that parlay from hitting me to keep their Sejuani from leveling up. This is 4, 8, 10, 12. 12 does not kill them. But if I if I just play like a spray fin, they just play another blocker and it's still 12. So Something up my sleeve. 12 like almost kills them. 
right? We're looking at like Ledros. We're almost killing him. Try to stay alive. Three blockers, five, six, seven, eight. Right now, this is eight damage. Halt. No, 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 no. Doesn't really matter where those block. Oh, nine damage? Oh, because this level's up. So we're down to one. Yeah. So they have what, any more damage? Will we die? The winter's claw endures. So yeah, warning shot kills us. Basically, you know, like we're gonna try to kill them with the Ledros the next turn, right? So they have. It's very unlikely that we win, but it's still possible that we win. Um, it looks like how they only had like monkey idols last turn. No, because I guess if I would have played Sprayfin, they would have played this Crackshot Corsair. So yeah, I, I should have played Sprayfin before attacking last turn. That doesn't heal us. Um, we don't really have anything that does heal us. Yeah. And they have the warning shot. Ooh, that, was a, that was a really good game. Good, good game. Yeah, we're both... Exactly, we're both playing fun decks. That was a good game. Um, so we're playing against Shivana, Aurelian Soul. That's probably a pretty good deck. I imagine Ruination being very good against Shivana, Aurelian Soul. A bunch of dragons. We'll have our uh, Curse Keeper, Black Caretaker stuff going. We got very good, useful two mana spells because we don't have to be like the fastest, like most aggressive star, especially with Ruination. So that's always thinking that, like these kind of cards could just kind of be good uh, to have. Whoa! Thank you so much. We got a donation for the nice stream. Thank you so much. The anonymous donation there. That's that is amazing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Herald of Dragons. That card is scary. Dragon blood and that is why that card is scary. Heart. Let the blood boil, half dragon. All right, half dragon. We're gonna go with this. Get the four three to block. Turn Shivana down to like one health as they attack. Maybe have Caretaker clean these up. The chains, they never stop. I am watching okay. you, dragon. So I like that they uh, tapped out. So this should work here. Mentor the stones. And basically just keeping the two mana for like Glimpse Beyond up and also extra spell mana for, you know, us being a Ruination deck also important. So that's why I'm not just casting Stalking Shadows. I know we could cast Stalking Shadows, but having the extra mana, f um, you know, is definitely useful. And there's just not really a reason for me to cast the because I have all these things that um, so far I've been uh, very happy to play. Gotta go with the flow. And so I'll be able to still, like, whatever they challenge with the Screeching Dragon, I can glimpse beyond and then still have two mana. Prepare for battle. I see it. 
The Undying is our best draw. Yay. Because that is a card that we get to play and still ruination away and not be mad at. Shape the skies and mold the earth. The summit's final trial. Uh, yuck. That thing does not die to ruination. So if I mentor the stones on the undying and it's a 4-4. Four -four, and then they kill it, it's not going to come back as a 5-5, five five, right? Like, it's going to come back as a 3-3, three three, right? Like, it'll come back as a 2-2, two two and then we'll get the one bonus. So, Mentor of the Stones doesn't actually really work that well with the Undying. So, that that doesn't really work. I'm something of an aspiring trichologist. Hey, Real Dooku. What is up? This is tough. Let's go with Sprayfin. The spell shield's unnecessary. But that's why we're playing Ruination. Very good Ruination, get rid of a bunch of dragons. And stuff like that. So I think I go like Ephemeral Spray, spray Fin, Caretaker away the Spray Fin. Like a fish in water. <laughs> we got lots of gluttonies. Very gluttonous. The gambler, of course, can block the firebrand. Hello, good Terra. Let's rock. Stupid spell shields. I don't like them. Looks like I'm gonna have to just twist a fate red card to get rid of spell shield. a fair game or played one I guess I'm a people person to the stars I don't really want to take all of this but like I don't really want to take eight but I don't really want to block with my brash gambler either one two th so this would just be two four gotta trust one, your two, instincts three, four. Alright, so four, five, six. Mm. I'm not casting Ruination next turn and leveling up. Okay, so I guess I'm just not, Okay, so I'm not casting Twist. Love. Okay. Someone's feeling lucky. My saplings. So we have to block. I don't, you know, I, I wanted to keep the gambler in play, of course, with the attack ability. I guess we just don't really have the ability to. Wonder at my creations. Here I 
Nice, I still have 11 mana. Trying to get my opponent to play more things uh, out in my ruination, but the, the problem is like all the units that they could get, um, they're all gonna have spell shield. Still gonna have some pretty awesome cards, but you know, Ruination's kind of keeping us in it. It's just trying its trying its best to keep us in it. Like I said, still gonna have some pretty awesome cards. Think about just stunning that with Twisted Fate. I know I could play a Spray Fit and block. But it's probably better to have this, the Twisted Fate in play first. Before we start drawing stuff. I'm always up for a round or two. Dead in their tracks. And I'm always up for a round or two. We were forged in dragon fire. Stop. Gotta go with the flow. Ready weapon. That's too bad. I was gonna like, you know, have a good chance of leveling this thing up, honestly. That's too bad. Another lost. Win big or die trying. So if I if I caretaker away the curse keeper I don't get the four three. So shakedown and then challenge challenge do eleven. Of my sleep. Well, we found our other undyings. There we go. We got the 11 in. How about that? How about that? We just defeated leveled up Aurelian Soul. <laughs> Good job, Ruination. It's not definitely not bad at all. I would say, the question is how good is Trundle Trinomir? Yeah, so not bad. I would say it's probably a, you know, like a probably like a tier one to tier two deck it's uh definitely can put together some good wins it's gonna it's gonna be a polarizing deck that will have some really good matchups and some other matchups that are not very good uh, hello all right we're going to just go ahead and get rid of all three of these we'll just keep the twisted fate Twisted fate can do some work um Question, so I'm a new player for Singleton right now. Is it possible to make three viable decks fairly fast with Singleton? I would think so. With this with this game, it's it is it is just viable to sorry, it is possible to make viable decks quickly with this game because this game doesn't it doesn't re revolve around only playing a few certain cards. Uh or anything like that. Like, there's all sorts of different cards that you can play, and they'll be viable um, with this game. So I, I definitely, I wanted my opponent to play something else this turn. My plan was to play Caretaker on the Curse Keeper, but I wanted them to play something else. 
Um, they did not fall for my shenanigans and did not play anything else. Unfortunately. Not and ready. Hopefully we hit Brash Gambler. Alright, Sprayfin. Safeguard our homes. You can't do this. Save the homestead. So caretaker leave me with four mana left. Yeah, it's so like this. Yeah, so it's this game. Like, um, you know, you have tons of rewards in this game as far as earning new cards go, and then you also this game is just designed to have lots of cards be playable. And so, like that that kind of combination, you're you're going to be able to have you're going to be able to find good stuff. I want them to have their 3-3 kill my 2-1. Yeah, I, I could do this. Let's actually do this. And then we won't attack here. And so what this is going to do is this is going to have the Avros and Sentry go down to um, one health. And they'll have like a one one health Omen Hawk if they don't throw the Omen Hawk in front of here. So the multiple one health things we can like red card and end up killing a bunch of stuff. Okay, so they, they do throw away the Omen Hawk, unfortunately. I, I was hoping they did not block. But it looks like they're going to. Alright, I'm perfectly fine with uh, getting rid of that. I can I can glimpse beyond this sapling for free right now, but I'd rather wait till the Twist of Fate's in play before I glimpse beyond. But Troll Chant's an awesome card, so we'll we'll take that trade. Right now, I, I have a better board and two extra cards than them. But they also have Sejuani and Trinomir that are super scary. And those cards are incredible. So it's not like we're definitely going to win this or anything, because Sejuani and Trinomir can uh, steal games for sure. Alright, so them passing is telling me... That's kind of telling me they have Sejuani and they want me to play something like a Twisted Fate or something and then they're going to Sejuani it. That's what that's telling me. Caretaker is the most useful card. Okay. So I block there, we take a damage. play this. Just set up a pretty decent open attack for me. Sejuani's at three. Carefully. That's ten. We're halfway there. These stories were true. Eh, not really that true. 
So I, I kind of want to just keep this Twisted Fate for red card abilities. But I don't know. I can do some a decent amount of dr you know drawing. I can draw a decent amount of cards. I don't change fate, but I can see it. We have so many cards. <laughs> Alright, we're making just bigger undyings. So this is going to give me 10 cards. Ugh. I was really hoping to find like a 1 or a 2 mana thing to put into play. That didn't really work out very well. I'm kind of stuck. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. I want to, I'm basically, I'm trying to keep Ruination Mana, also. Um. That did not work out. But, I have ten cards, right? Like, I can't complain too much. Like, I got lots of cards. They have three. We got a cooling strike out of their hand. We live here. This is outrage. They walked around. I'm always up for a round or two. Soak it in. Yep, no Battle Fury, that's good. Ledros. Gosh, I guess... So, obviously, the, like, a Blighted Caretaker is going to be one. And then, I guess the other Brash Gambler. I really don't need a second. Try on the high stakes table, huh? So right now, this if this works, like this would be three for Twisted Fate. <clears throat> Attacking with the Brash Gambler um, would make that five. Stalking Shadows can make it six. Do have nine cards in hand right now? Which, as you can probably guess. That's too many to even draw two fleeting. Caretaker just keeps putting a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, see, so we got to use the Sejuani right now, and they maybe didn't want to. So it's a six, seven. Gotta trust your instincts. Okay. You know, it's just if it didn't have this plus one plus one from the Omen Hawk, that would have been a perfect thing to challenge with the Undying. If it didn't have that. This uh, vulnerable is permanent. Where am I at? I'm at six. The chains, they never stop. Another undying? I don't really have room for another one. I mean, I can, but I can't, like, butcher or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, I guess I do play it. Remember, we're gonna have another Undying come back. I can't butcher right now. Many 
tribes. One Freljord. All right, so it's ten overwhelm. <laughs> I guess you can win them all. So basically, the next twist of fate will be leveled up. This one, so I have five, seven to block with. Soak it in. I think I can wait and see if they play like another thing before ruination. I think this this could just be me dying to Battle Fury. Because I didn't ruination. Um, but I guess if they do have ruination, I mean, I do now drawing the stalking shadows. That's good. So now I have two fast spells. Like that's that's definitely a very good draw. Because now I can you know get to the the gold card stun. So that's certainly really good that that we drew that. Perfect. That worked out perfectly. Who says I don't share? And of course, we are going to be bringing our uh, two Undyings back, and that will be game. That was perfect patience for that ruination. Hey, eat them. I just played against you. Oh, sorry, you're an iron. Because, yeah, basically, because um, you just played in normal, and so, like, in normal, it just matches two people up just with anything, right? And, like, so it's it's our meme tier day right now. We're just playing in normal instead of ranked. Um, so, yeah, but that was, that was a really good match, though. GG's. All right, Leeson Riven. Leeson Riven's going to be really difficult. This one's going to be difficult. Um, because we, we're we not really going to be able to stop them if they just have, you know, go all in on, like, just playing a whole bunch of, like, pump spells on something. And we're not stopping them. Finally, some action. We have Twisted Fate Gold Card, I guess. Not much. It's not much. All right, Warden's Prey. Nope. I guess no Warden's Prey. We'll just spend two mana to discard a card. To serve the great Looks like this game may not be very close. I'll show the hunters. This game may not be very close. See the world from behind a basilisk. I'm always up for a round or two. Because if they have a champion, they're going to have three Reforges in hand. They already have one Reforge in hand with the Rune Weaver. They're going to have two more with the Blade Squire. Um, so if they have a champion, they're just going to be able to suit it up. Force is meaningless. That's a champion. Keep up, keep up. Oh yeah, Devil, yeah, I love love Breath of the Wild. It's a it's a great game. Well, let's see. This actually Actually I should let this happen. Because that saves me two life. It, it's they're not dragons raging right now. Um, so that does save me two life. I should let that happen. All right, finally the undying. To serve the greater good. That's bad. I don't know. My gluttony options are that great. Everyone's a garden. Let's do this. Let's 
If I glimpse beyond this, they don't get the 3 2. I'm not sure if that's worth it. Oh, because they go. They just play spells, open attack. Yeah, I think we have to. So, okay, so since I liked Breath of the Wild, I should try Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's a shameless clone, but has a lot of fun things. Okay. I think I, I've seen I've seen like the advertisements for that like on Steam and stuff. Yeah, I'll have to try that. Even a fragment snuffs out lives. I am reformed. This kind of strategy of just, you know, huge buff up something is just not something that I can really handle. I do not have anything to stop this. The cost of war. Prepare yourself. Give them a chance. So only puts me to seven. Not dead yet. Okay, not dead yet. That's good news. We're not dead yet. Go with the flow. I write the rules of power. Well, we're probably dead the next turn. So I didn't play the other Undying, because as you can see, uh, with my plan of like playing the Caretaker there, I was going to have a full board. So I did. That's why I didn't play any other thing the previous turn. We were already going to have a full board. Grow up so fast. So it's basically like, what if I play something else? Like, what if I play more threats? And you, I would think that they would just have, like, they would just play another blocker. And so, therefore, it wouldn't be worth it. I think. Approach, savage. I guess it can't be for sure, for sure. Nine? Nine's just too much life. It's too much life. We weren't expecting callers. No turning back now. Yuppie, I talk to spirits. These are my wrong. I'm not sure the exact point of playing that blade fragment, but <clears throat> okay. Okay, so they're just making a sword. So both things can have a sword. Awaken. 
Yeah, we don't have a very good chance of surviving. So many blade fragments everywhere. So many blade fragments everywhere. So even if I... Okay, so basically if I glimpse beyond this, they don't get the Dragon's Rage, but with the Overwhelm, they still take six, and I still take one. Um, so we are unfortunately still exactly dead with the Glimpse Beyond, even though this would be best case scenario of me just being able to do this and still like stay alive at one and force them to do something else first. So unfortunately, my only option is to Atrocity. Uh, that, that's just simply the only option is to, to try to kill one of these things with Atrocity. And nothing else really matters. And I could have trusted the zap to kill it. Um, but I'm just I'm just doing the 5-5 five five to do more damage just in case of some kind of protection. Okay, and they have they have the card to give that double attack, so. That will kill me. Tough matchup for us. With just uh, you know, buff up huge champions of Overwhelm. They had a, a great hand, and, uh, you know. Alright, game number five. We'll see if we can get a 3-2 record. Alright, so the the Undying is usually pretty good against a bunch of Shadow Isles removal, right? Because they can't get rid of it. So we definitely want the Undying. Um, this hand is just solid, though. Even though there's no Undying, all of these things are... I guess they're not all card advantage, right? But, like, the Croaker hitting the Curse Keeper will draw a card for us. Out there, and then, um, you know, Twisted Fate, Spray Fin, these things, the things draw cards, too. Man Piggy with a Twitch Prime sub. Thanks for the resub there. Staying on that two-month streak. I, I appreciate that. And there's the Undying. Very good. I don't think Look out for not attacking is the answer. Alright, so I'm probably playing the Undying this next turn. Um, but it does mean that we lose a turn of not playing one of our awesome four mana cards. But I think it's probably best just to play the Undying. old eyes still see far and clear. Do get this Warden's Prey in here also. Which isn't bad. Am I just attacking like this? Avros and Sentries have been, uh, you know, very good. That's a that's a great card. It's probably like in, in this match it was probably Avros and Sentry, and then you know Nivea is the cards I want to see the least. And obviously Nivea first though. Ready the torches. Alert the villain. That's a good card. Gotta go with the flow. I don't know. Kind of quiet. I don't. I don't like how this game is shaped up at all. Okay, I like that. That's a way to finally kill my Undying. <laughs> I haven't really found ways to kill the Undying. That is one way. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. 
Soak it in. All right, blue card. First card drawn. Oh, why can't I cast that? Need one more, one more mana. Butcher gives me another card that can kill the Undying, which is good. So we want to be able to kill the Undying as much as possible, make it as large as possible. Lady Luck is smiling. Gluttony can be just fine. We're not that close for our Twisted Fate leveling up. The spirit of winter awakens. Wrapped in cold silence. Aight. Get more dead undying, it's always good. So do I want to do I want to gold card this Anivia and kill it? Probably not. I don't I don't think we're supposed to kill their Anivias. I think killing Anivia actually helps them. Well, we could just go another blue card. I'm always up for a round or two. Yeah, I guess we just go another blue card. Blue as the serpent. I know I can Ravenous Butcher away the Undying, but like this Undying with the one health is gonna die to an attack, so I, I like that. I like that it's just already gonna die, so I can save the butcher or whenever it's not going to die. Don't need to use it right now. Snow, wind and ice. Rend the sky. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Fortunately, can't stop that. It's too bad. So I, I think I like Gluttony more than Glimpse Beyond, so I'm kind of testing if they use removal here, then we'll Gluttony in response. Oh, that's too bad. Get rid of the egg. The egg Nivia. Okay. A new era begins. I mean, I think this is probably maybe just like us taking 20 damage from just, you know, Anivia abilities. <laughs> That's probably where this game ends up. When, all, when it's all said and done. It's probably where we're going, but who knows? We're gonna have all these undyings. Return to us. Oh, soil. Man, these vile fees. Killing me. Balfies are killing me. Keep up, keep up. Let's do this. Alright, so 
14. So right now I have three blockers. I'm going to want a fourth. Okay. Oh, I had a third Undying coming back. I forgot about the third Undying. Oh, I, th I was thinking I had two. I forgot about the third. For my homeland. Gross. Night flippers. Forgot about the third. Well, that's too bad. But they're saplings! Why are you here? I don't I don't really know how Undying gets through Anivia's though, right? Like how how does this ever end up with us winning, right? How does That's what I've been trying to figure out. Like how does the How does the You know, because they just block Undying with Anivia, right? Like so I just don't I don't think that we can possibly win this. Yeah, like it's like eventually they like block with Anivia's, then I ruination away Anivia's, but I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this is coming out with us on top ever. But I definitely need that other Undying. That was not good. But I guess it's it's me just milling out there. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to kill them in twelve turns. Yeah, this this is just gonna be a long game. So we're not gonna win this. Yeah, and Anivia just has has that late game locked up. Um, oh yeah, Hope's End. I guess I I didn't even think I didn't I did forget about that part of our deck that we did have Atrocity, that maybe Ledros plus Atrocity. It'd be a real long shot that they wouldn't have, you know, like a they wouldn't have just another Anivia in hand or any kind of Frostbite spell or any Vengeance. It'd be a real long shot, but that was that wasn't an, an, an out. That I guess I could uh, play a couple more turns to see. It would be a real long shot for it to, to work, but it wasn't out. You know, they would, because, you know, another Anivia in hand turns into a Harsh Winds, or they, they usually just play Harsh Winds also, and they usually play Flash Freeze and, and uh, Vengeance and all that kind of stuff. That looked like a tough matchup. So we, we ended up, our last two, two games were kind of decks that were difficult for us to deal with, whether it was, um, you know, the just make a really big overwhelm thing or just anivia just playing amazing defense and it's really hard to just kill anivia with just vanilla units on the ground doesn't matter how big they are even if even if they keep even if they like can't die and they can be like you know five five six six seven seven eight eight even if they can't die and can just be very large but if they're just vanilla units that you know avaros and sentries just run into uh run into them and then you know like the vile feast having the spiderlings that just block and then, of course, obviously, Anivias and Rekindlers and, you know, Harrowings. And it, it's really, it's basically impossible. Like, they can block until you run out of cards. And so it's basically impossible to um, kill them with that. So that's a tough matchup. But um, our, our deck was pretty cool. I think I think Gluttony with Undying looked really good. And, like, this this core of our deck is in specific matchups of Gluttony, Undying, and then Sprayfin, Gambler. It did look pretty good. It did look pretty good. The ruinations were amazing for us for some interaction. Um, so I, I think our deck looks pretty good. Like it, it obviously has some holes. It's obviously really, really slow. And um, like I said, it has some holes of like Anivia can't get through. And then if your opponent plays huge overwhelm things, like where they just like buff up, buff up their units with a bunch of pump spells, you can't really stop that either. So like there, there are some holes in here. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty fun to play, and it's it's real grindy, and it's it's difficult to stop. All right, but uh, there we go. That's that's Undying Gambler. So those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed our first Meme Tier Monday deck today. Uh, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.